Welcome back into this week's episode of Plead Your Case. To start this episode off, we're going to have an NFL recap of week one. Some games that might have been really shocking, some disappointments, and some players that might not look so good to start off the season. And for the next segment, we have our mini segment. It's going to be different from the five on five, but more a NFL pick em segment one versus one. Whoever wins moves on to the next one. And then to wrap it up, what's the hardest sport? Let's talk about it on Plead Your Case. Hey there, sports fans. You're watching another episode of Waynesburg University Community Television's only national sports debate show, Plead Your Case. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual observer, get ready to join us every week as we dive deep into current pressing sports topics. Our panelists dissect every angle, every scenario, and every statistic to influence their fiery takes. What has he done without Tom Brady's? And spirited arguments. No, listen, Bowtie. Where have you ever played Foursquare? No, you were too old to play Foursquare. <laughs> there will be no argument unexplored, and every take will be under review. After reviewing the play, the here in the Waynesburg University Communication Department, we believe in heated debates with a touch of friendly competition, which is why we also have a fresh five and five mini segment that you won't want to miss. I don't think a pitcher is breaking Cy Young's wins record of 511. You Google America's team and what do you get? You get the dollar. So sit back, relax, and get ready for some serious sports chat. It is time to plead your case. Welcome into our first segment. I'm Seth Adams, and today I have with me Benicio DeFalco and Anthony DeFilippo. And for this first segment, it's going to be a little bit of a recap of the first week and just talk about what we saw stuck out, some of the games, and just, you know, kind of just get an understanding of what this season is going to unfold. So, guys, let's just take a look at the games. I mean, we have the first game, Thursday Night Football, Chiefs versus Ravens. I mean, what a game that was. Yeah, and then absolutely. we have other games like, the 49ers look great. Uh, the Steelers only winning on field goals. I mean, are you kidding me? This graphic made by Ethan Spazorski. Good job, Ethan. I mean, and guys, uh, what, let's talk about the AFC North first. I mean, we got the Steelers who are on top 1-0. and Take that, Luke. And all the rest <laughs> having a loss. So, what's going on with the quarterbacks? What, what, what do you think, is, what do you think we, we, they have to do? So, starting off with uh, how the Steelers performed, I thought Justin Fields did a tremendous job as he went 17 for 23, was very accurate, had 156 passing yards and 57 rushing yards on the ground for 213 total, which I will say, I think um, Russell Wilson will probably have more passing yards, but in terms of production and just total yards, I think they'd have around the same. Mm -hmm. So. For the quarterback battle, I don't think either. I don't think the offense would look too different with either one. And honestly, uh, as a fan, I'm fine with either of them. Mm -hmm. I think the Steelers could perform well with Fields and Rust. I think passing the ball, both quarterbacks can be very accurate. Although we don't know what we're going to get from Russell Wilson this year, but uh, Justin Fields he impressed me a lot. And some of the runs he made, uh, he was able to make first man miss and. I think only uh, three or four quarterbacks can make those plays in the league. So I think Fields, the, the ceiling is very high and I'm very curious to see what direction the Steelers go in. Yeah, I think that's what kind of stands out about Justin Fields is he's able to use his legs. It's something that Russell Wilson doesn't really have as a part of his game. Um, winning on field goals is not a sustainable tactic to win yeah. every single week. It isn't. <laughs> Let's just be honest about that. I mean, it's shades of the 100%. game they won against the Chiefs in the playoffs eight years ago, which, by the way, was their last ever, the last playoff win uh, in, middle you know, in the last decade. Yeah, we were in middle, middle school, school when that yeah. happened, by the way. Um, so if they decide to insert Russ this week, which I think they will, it's a classic Mike Tomlin move. Yeah. Um, won't be too mad about it. It's in Denver against his old team, rivalry. Uh, a revenge game, I guess, uh, of sorts. So, yeah, if Russ starts this week, won't be a big deal, uh, but would like to see Fields get in the game at some point here in the next couple weeks. Now, let's stay in the AFC North in the Browns. They got handled by the Cowboys, and we look at Deshaun Watson not having a great game, but he's getting paid five for five years, $230 million, $45 million signing bonus. But... Also, Daniel Jones getting destroyed by the Vikings. He's worth four years, 160 mil. What? <laughs> These guys are getting paid millions to, to throw interceptions. I mean, I, I, I don't understand, but guys, what do you think is worse? The, the Brown situation or the Giants situation? So I, I may say this, uh, 
I think Daniel Jones was was less deserving of the money and I the agree. pay, but he had the worst uh, or worse situation than Watson. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But not only that, if you look at it, Watson hasn't performed, and we saw you know Watson at his highest. This is a you know this could be an MVP candidate in the league, and he hasn't looked you know like that at all. And then just continuing on. Looking back at the Browns, you know, the Giants, they didn't have a Baker Mayfield that they could have kept on their team and signed. So that's why I, I'm going with the Browns here and Deshaun Watson. Just from that fact, you see what Baker's doing in Tampa Bay. Oh, he's killing. And it, it, I think it leaves a, a bad taste in all Browns fans' mouth, you know, looking at Baker and the success he's had in Tampa, leading that team to the playoffs. I mean, and, and if you look at it, Baker, he did a lot of things in his short span on the Browns that a lot of Browns quarterbacks have never done. Mm. He got him to the playoffs. He won a playoff game versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, keep mm. in mind, a team that dominated him for the past, you know, 10 to 15 years. So that was just huge for the organization, and he kind of got the Browns their spark back. Mm -hmm. Daniel Jones has never been a super successful quarterback in the NFL, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm saying him, because he does not deserve 40 <laughs> million dollars a year four years 160 million are you kidding me <laughs> I, I mean look at this guy his stats touchdowns in the last five years 2019 24 then just fell off the face of the cliff or the earth 11 touchdowns in 2020 10 15 2 and then zero this year with uh, the two interceptions in the first game against the vikings it's horrible <laughs> he's a bad quarterback he, he the sean watson uh if you didn't attach the trade with it, I think the trade actually makes that contract look a whole yeah. lot worse. Mm -hmm. um, they're able to get money off of that contract, and they actually did some cap restructuring this year with this contract. Mm -hmm. um, so I think from that standpoint, that actually makes Daniel Jones's contract that much worse. Yeah, and we also look at the Bengals losing to the Patriots in the first Ooh. week, that, which was a huge upset for the Patriots. I mean, the Bengals, it seems like they're at this, they have this story every year. They have these games where they just lose and they look bad. And then they have the games where they look absolutely incredible. Now, are these Bengals going to be the ones that we see where they make the Super Bowl? Or are they going to be the Bengals that fall apart once again? I think they finish in the middle of the pack this yeah. year. I think the AFC North goes Ravens 1, Bengals 2, Steelers 3, Browns 4. I don't think, like I just said with Deshaun Watson, I don't think the Browns are good at all. Um, but I do think the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, what we saw on Thursday night against the Kansas City Chiefs, that actually gave me some hope that the Ravens would win the division this year, and I think the Bengals will end up coming back. Listen, it was Joe Burrow coming off of an injury. It was Jamar Chase, who hadn't played or practiced in months due to the contract holdout, and then T. Higgins was out. Once they get all three of their offensive weapons back in full force, that's when you see the real Bengals come out. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to agree with you. I got the Bengals kind of in that – that third range in the AFC North. And I think a lot of it has to do with them getting rid of Joe Mixon. If mm. you watch Bengals games, you know, they leaned on him a lot. And he was kind of that, that power horse and he was that work back that they used, especially late in the playoffs. And they, they were able to lean on. I know Joe Burrow is phenomenal in the playoffs. And, you know, he's definitely made a career that way. And if you look at it, a number one thing to me between a quarterback and receiver is relationship. Jamar Chase wasn't there for weeks, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I know Joe Burrow and Jamar have been playing for each other for some time, but, you know, those weeks away from, from the team aren't going to help anyone. Yeah, I mean, it, it, you need that bond. A chemistry is huge, mm -hmm. and it's so underrated, I feel, in sports, because if you hate the dude you're throwing the ball to, you're not going to throw him the ball. But we also got to see Aaron Rodgers play his first game in almost a year. He played a couple snaps, uh, hurt, got hurt, didn't play the whole rest of the season, and then he puts up this stat line, 13 for 21, 167 yards, one touchdown, one interception, a 32-19 loss. I mean, to the San Francisco 49ers, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, I wasn't expecting that. But what about you? Flip, what about you? I'm kind of intrigued by it, actually. I think a guy who was out all of last season, um, he, he played better than actually what I thought he would against yeah. a really tough That's 49ers true. defense. Um, he looked like he can still be a quarterback. He didn't play as bad as the Bryce Youngs and the Daniel Joneses of this week. Yeah. Yeah. So he still, he still acted like he could be a serviceable NFL quarterback. Can he lead the Jets to the promised land? No. Yeah. Uh, Just no. I, Just, I agree. <laughs> looking at the game, uh, it, was, it was satisfying to see Aaron Rodgers back on the field. I, I'm going to first off start by saying that Aaron Rodgers is an absolute legend in the league. And uh, I will say the start, start off, I think – 
I don't think the Jets are in trouble. I think you know they can still have some success. If you look at some of the drives, it were drop balls by Alan Lazard and you know a few other players. And uh, I, I feel like you take away a couple plays in this game, and the Jets are a little bit closer to being the 49ers. And I think. You know, Aaron Rodgers showed, you know, he's still capable of being a talented quarterback in this league at times. But the story uh, line from this game that I really took out was James Mason coming in for uh, Christian McCaffrey, 28 oh, yeah. carries. Jordan Mason was yeah, ridiculous. Jordan, under 47 yards and a touchdown, just playing out of his mind. But for, you know, the reporters afterwards to question him about Christian McCaffrey, I feel like it's just unfair to him. And I feel like you know, yeah, that being the storyline takes away from how good I of a game see that. he had. He was upset about that at mm -hmm. the media. And, I, you know, that's a question that is – it's just tough to answer. I mean, you come in, you make a play, and you, you have an outstanding game, and then they're asking you, oh, how would you feel when Christian McCaffrey – like, this is his time to shine, and it's kind of <laughs> hidden from a Christian McCaffrey yeah. injury, which is – it's upsetting to see. But regardless, we, had, we saw some pretty breakout games, like, like you just said for him. Uh, were there any other players that stuck out for you guys that you – want to mention in this quick uh, recap for the week, Benny? Well, I mean, there's the obvious ones. There's the Josh Allens. He had 245 total yards and four total touchdowns, and he's my early MVP candidate. I know not a lot of people are big on the Bills, and I think, you know, those MVP seasons that we really think about, that's when, you know, those stars really shine and they show what they're capable of, and I think everyone's rotten off and, you know, riding off on the Bills. They're not, you know, too positive on them this year. And I think it falls back on 17 and Josh Allen. I think he's hungry. I think he's ready to beat Mahomes. And I think that year could be. I don't, I'm not sure if, you know, the Bills are going to go on a Super Bowl run. But I think Josh Allen has, you know, he's very mm. capable of being the MVP. Yeah. I think one player we didn't talk about was Sam Darnold. Yeah. He played yeah. impressively Shout out for Sam Darnold. this week uh, against the Giants in MetLife Stadium, a stadium that hasn't been too fond to him mm -hmm. over the years. Um, <laughs> his times. In his times with the Jets, you know, I don't think he saw any ghosts on Sunday, um, but he played very impressively, and it kind of shows how good uh, a quarterback can be if they have Justin Jefferson as their wide receiver one. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see if that continues for Sam Darnold, but he was a guy that I had uh, written down this week. Mm -hmm. And we look at the first game, the Chiefs-Ravens game, ending by a toe from Likely. I mean, what an outstanding <laughs> game by Likely mm -hmm. as well. I mean, coming out, Mark Andrews barely – it doesn't. He's not the main focus of the tight end position on this game. It was Isaiah Likely. Now, do you think that the the Chiefs? I mean, the Chiefs and the 49ers both took a win this week. I mean, and the Chiefs only lost, or they only won by a toenail. You could even say that. <laughs> so, do the Chiefs and 49ers are they looking like they're going to be at those top dog positions again? Well, uh, for starters, I think you know it would kind of be disrespectful not to put those te two mm -hmm. teams up as the front runners, but. I think a lot of uh, other teams definitely showed what they were capable of. Like, like I said, the Bills, I know they played the Cardinals, but you know, Josh Allen showed that he can, can still compete with this team, and I think that showed a lot. But the Ravens, I, I know they lost to Kansas City, but that offense was explosive, and both teams were able to drive you know, very fast late game. I, I, we saw it with Isaiah Likely. They were this close to beating the Chiefs, so I, I think the Ravens got a good chance. And, the Eagles, too, I think yeah. they showed what they're capable mm -hmm. of uh, versus the Packers in Brazil. And the Packers are another team with the healthy Jordan Love. You know, yeah. depending on what Malik Willis can do in these next couple weeks, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, those were two teams. But also the Houston Texans and C.J. Stroud, you know, fully healthy with Joe Mixon. You yeah. know, Joe Mixon and mm -hmm. Stephon Diggs, too, you know, new members of the team, both having two touchdowns, immediate impact. I think watch out for the Texans. Joe Mixon has been my running back for, like, the last five years. I know he's been on the Bengals, but he is an impressive running back. Um, first off, I want to talk about the Ravens. I know we're deep in Pittsburgh Steelers country here, but I really like the Baltimore yeah. Ravens this year. Mm -hmm. If Isaiah likely had the same size feet as me, his legs would look really weird, but he would have been in bounds. Um, <laughs> I just I, – I like the Baltimore Ravens a lot this yeah. year. Um, and I think, like Benny said, C.J. Stroud, he's an Ohio State guy. I know you, I know you like C.J. Stroud. Um, but the Texans looked very, very impressive this week. Yes, I 100% agree. But that's going to wrap it up for our first segment. Don't go anywhere. New mini segment coming up right here on Plead Your Case.
Welcome to the first NFL Mini Pick'em segment. I'm your host still, Seth Adams, and today I am joined by Meg Barry and Luke Andrusik, the Steeler vs. Browns, <laughs> AFC North, Air Force <laughs> One, Black Energy. It's the type of vibe that we're starting off this week. And yep. let's start it off hot, guys. Let's start it off hot. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna stick with the Steelers, Luke. It's okay. Don't get angry. Okay. Sorry. Steelers vs. Broncos. Meg, we'll start with you. Okay. So. This isn't even a biased thing, obviously. I got Steelers jersey on, but I promise I'm not biased. I genuinely think the Steelers are the better team in this Steelers Bronco game. My final score, 16 to 10. I, I, I'm, I was kind of sad this weekend. Why should we win a game because of our kicker? I mean, good job, Chris Bo- Broswell. Chris Boswell is Pittsburgh. <laughs> you killed it, but. We're rolling with the punches. We got to win, and that's more than the Broncos can say with week one for them. So a win is a win, and yeah, Justin Fields, Russell Wilson. But we do have Chris Boswell and TJ Watt. So honestly, I feel like our team can ride on that. But when you look at the Broncos side of things, preseason Bo Nix, see you later, doesn't exist anymore. He got a slap in the face with reality of what NFL football looks like and had a Horrible week one, in my opinion. So I really think just with that alone, the Steelers are going to walk away with this win easily. Bo picks. So if you look at Tomlin's career in Denver, he's one in four in Denver, which is not very good. Uh, Tim Tebow would like to say hello. Uh, however, <laughs> okay. 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 the Denver Broncos are not very good. Bo Nix, rookie quarterback, this will be his second start. Although the Steelers' offense did not look too great last week, uh, obviously not scoring a touchdown and, you know, carried on the back of Chris Boswell. Kirk Cousins had a pretty bad game for Atlanta. Um, but I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I have the Steelers coming out on top, uh, winning the game 19-6 to against the Broncos. That blows my mind, Luke. I would have bet $5 million. As much as I would love to. As much as I hate to do it, I had to pick the Steelers. <laughs> At All least right. you're a realist. Their defense At least is good you're understanding. this year. Yeah. yeah, I agree. All right, next one. We got Bucks versus Lions. Now, all these games are one point, and then the last one we're going to have is going to be worth – two points so it's gonna kind of, it's kind of the game of the week but we'll, we'll get to that more in the future but bucks versus lions look who you got so the bucks are 1-0 and and the lions are 1-0 the lions won uh this past monday against the rams in overtime that was a, a thriller of a game jared goff only threw for a touchdown and an interception gibbs and montgomery both had a touchdown and jmo went off for five catches and 120 yards um baker threw for four touchdowns last week mm-hmm. it, it pains me i love baker uh, I miss him in Cleveland. I miss him in the brown and orange. Uh, but I think the Lions are just too well-rounded uh, of a team. I don't think the Bucks' defense is uh, that great. Um, they, their offense is going to score points. But I think at the end of the day, the Lions are going to take this one 27-17. to 17. Yeah, I agree with you. I feel like it's going to be a little more of a high-scoring game. I feel like the Lions are going to win 34-28. to 28. So, yeah, a little bit of a closer game. But like you said, Baker had a great look from Tampa, already doing really well. But when you look at last year when the Lions and the Bucks played a, played each other in the divisional round, the um, Lions beat the Bucks by eight, and they had a 14-point fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. So just looking at that game in particular, looking at last year, I definitely think it's going to be another close battle, and it's going to come down to the fourth quarter again. But I just think the Lions are going to pull away with the – Better offense and the better defense overall this year. Mm-hmm. Now we got the next one: the Bengals versus the Chiefs. They're versus the Chiefs. I mean, Burrowhead. What What are we thinking? <laughs> it's my home's house. It, what are we thinking, Meg? You start. Um, I don't really think much needs to be said here. I really don't. The, the Chiefs are going to win. Chiefs are going to win, 35 to 17. They're going to beat the Bengals. The Burrowhead era is over. It's over. I'm sorry. Oh, Danny's I not agree. I, I'm sorry, <laughs> Danny Dimes in the back. It's over. It's gone. I, ever since he hurt his hand, did that weird thing to his ligament and his thumbs, I, he's done. I, he's not the same quarterback. And what made it worse for him was when he shaved his head and bleached it blonde, okay? Joe oh, Burrow really went downhill, and the Burrowhead era is over. And the Chiefs are looking for a three-peat. They're a dominant team. They're honestly, in my opinion, the best team in the league right now, and they are true contenders for this three-peat. So I don't have much else to say other than Chiefs are coming out on top of this game. Did you say a score? Yes, 35-17. 35-17. Okay, cool. I'm going to have to agree with you there, Meg. I would never count out Joe Burrow in Kansas City just because he has some uh, history there, you know, winning the AFC Championship in uh, Mahomes' house, not Burrowhead. Sorry, Danny. 
Uh, but T. Higgins will be out this game. Uh, Jamar Chase had five catches for 52 yards, or it was six catches for 62 yards. Excuse me. Um, the difference, the difference between Burrow and Mahomes is Mahomes makes his weapons. He has new guys. Rasheed Rice is his second year. He's making a weapon out of him. Um, Burrow, when he doesn't have three wide receiver number ones in Higgins, Chase, and Boyd, we see how that went. Yeah. And they don't have a running game whatsoever uh, at right, right now. So although I do think the Bengals are going to play better on offense this week. Uh, I still have the Chiefs coming out on top, 27 to 21. All right, all right. And we're given scores, so if that we do get a tie, that is going to be our tiebreaker, whoever has the closer score. But now let's go to Sunday Night Football. Bears with Caleb Williams versus the Texans. Luke, we'll start with you on this one. So this past weekend against the Titans, the Bears had a terrible, terrible game on offense. But their defense, yeah, as it does they usually, carried. They carried. yeah, they carried uh, Caleb Williams to his first win. I'm a big Caleb Williams fan. I'm not gonna, you know, uh, say anything bad about him. But he did not have the greatest uh, first game of his career. I do think he'll bounce back though. I think he's gonna have a pretty decent uh, game. I think he's gonna throw for two touchdowns uh, this week. Joe Mixon uh, for the Texans. He ran four. 159 yards mm -hmm. last week, although it was on 30-plus carries. Um, but Diggs had two touchdowns. Stroud got sacked four times, which is something you don't want to see your franchise quarterback. He was pressured 30, so that offensive line needs to step it up a bit. But I do think the power, uh, the star power of the Texans is going to be too much uh, for the young Bears team. And I have the Texans winning just narrowly 23-20. to 20. So I can't believe we're agreeing again, but I have the Texans winning this game as well, although I do think the Texans are going to score a little bit more on top. It's going to be 31 to 13. I believe that they'll beat the Bears. The Bears offense just isn't there, and C.J. Stroud is a million times better than Will Levis. There's just no comparison there, and obviously C.J. Stroud, like you said, sacked four times. Not necessarily his fault that O-line really has to protect him better, give him more time inside the pocket, but... Personally, I just think he's not going to make as many mistakes. He's been in this position before, these tough positions. I mean, he took Texas far last year as a rookie quarterback, and he's really proved himself. And I think he's not going to break under the pressure of the Sunday night lights, and he's going to have himself a day. And I feel like C.J. Stroud and their defense, mwah, chef's kiss. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention fine. that Bears receiver um, Roma Dunze is also questionable for this week. Mm -hmm. So that would be a big uh, shutdown to their offense. He's a big part of it. All right, game of the week, AFC East matchup. Bills versus Dolphins, Thursday night football. This is worth two points now. Meg, who do you got? I have this being a really close game, and I did go back and forth with myself a little bit about this, but I have Dolphins winning 27-24. to 24. So... The Bills and the Dolphins somehow both got out of week one with a win, and it was one possession win, so very, very close games for the both of them. But in all honesty, the Bills and the Dolphins, neither one of them really impressed me in week one. I was not like, oh, my gosh, that's awesome. Like, you guys, it's so good. But then again, who's going to guard Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle? Who's going to do it? You can't. No one. No one on the Bills' defensive side is going to do it, especially with Taron Johnson. One of the Bills' starting corners is out. He's not even going to play. So with that alone, I feel like they don't have the defensive backs and the cornerbacks to stop those two amazing athletes. I really don't think it's even a question. So it looks like we're going to agree all the way through. So it's going to have to come <laughs> down on points. I am not very high on the Bills this year. Uh, they – just eked out a win against the Arizona Cardinals uh, this weekend, 34-28, to with, in my opinion, not that great of a Cardinals offense. The Bills' defense is not as good as it has been in these past couple of years where they've been going to the AFC Championship and deep in the playoffs. Uh, Josh Allen, is, if they want to win this game, Josh Allen is going to have to have a legacy game. He had 252 yards through the air last week and two touchdowns through the air and two touchdowns uh, on the ground. Um, but again, the Dolphins, I mean, how can you stop that offense, especially if you're giving up 26 or 28, excuse me, to Arizona? Yeah. Waddle and Hill both had 100 yards uh, receiving last week. Um, Tyreek had that touchdown. Obviously a rough day for Tyreek. Uh, I hope to see him bounce back. Um, I have the Dolphins, 31 to 20. Two is going to go off. All right. Well, good luck, guys. First week, and you're going to be battling it out. Good luck to the both of you. I hope you both have a very successful first week but that's going to do it for our mini segment don't go anywhere what's the hardest sport coming up this is so 
spies. Cornucopia. Try instead of train. Right, we'll take Welcome back to Plead Your Case. Back on the main desk here, I have Benicio De Falco and Anthony DeFilippo with me today to discuss what is the hardest sport. Now, take a look at the graphic made by Ethan Spazarski. We all have different opinions. I mean, I, I, let's start it off, guys. Look at if Sidney Crosby's face. Golf, if you don't think <laughs> golf is Goat. the hardest sport, I'm just saying. Oh. I mean, like, all right. I, don't all right. I mean, like, it is. <laughs> it is the... the Dude, come on. It's a top three. It's a top three. We I, we I think have, we have the top okay, three. This is the fr- I think one we have thing the top I think we can agree there. on. Yeah. We have yes. the top yeah. threes yes. of the hardest sports, I think, in, in my opinion. You yeah. agree with that? 100% opinion? agree. Okay. I, I think we all have, you know, the three, you know, most difficult sports out there. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to go with baseball straight up. I think baseball okay. is the hardest. You know, trying to hit, you know, the average pitcher in the MLB throws 90 to 100 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. With all the movement and the way these pitchers, uh, you know, throw the ball nowadays, do you know how difficult that has to be to yeah. sit there in the yeah. batter's box? Yeah. All the fans on you, too, keep that in mind. You know, I, I don't, all the concentration, I know your concentration. So there are no, fa- there are no fans anymore. in other sports. No, there talk, are no fans in other talking sports. Talking about concentration in golf, try to hit a 90 to 100 mile per hour fastball. Okay. What do you there think? are fans in hockey. There are, <laughs> <laughs> what, what are we talking about here with the fans? Uh, well, try skating on two blades <laughs> at full speed and shooting an 100 mile per hour slap shot into a goalie's mask. Try getting hit in the face with an 120 mile per hour slap shot. Well, they have pads in on. The face in the yeah, but <laughs> they have skates <laughs> on. All right. They have skates on two well, well, of them side well, by side. Well, 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 okay, well, I'm well, done. Bet, hockey, no, no, because no, hockey, you have something to say. In hockey, in hockey, you have all those pads on. In baseball, you're having 89 mile per hour ground balls coming at you with no pads 80. on. Okay. Well, I mean, these guys are also getting paid None. millions to be able None. to field the ground ball. I mean, okay, golf. Can you hit a ball? Can you hit a drive perfectly straight and be able to concentrate for 18 holes? Do you know yeah. how mental golf is? Okay. Do well, you know how mental golf is? Do you know how people go insane playing golf? I would I would say that 18 holes to nine innings is, is nearly the same. Okay, amount we of give time. a team. Okay. Half yeah, the time. Okay, let's say in baseball, you, can, you stand in right field for half the time. Okay, well, well you, if there's you got no your ball caddy, going which you got your caddy with you to you know talk things up. Yeah, you got but that's, to the, lean the, same on. You got okay. that's on. the same thing with having a caddy. Okay, that's Golf is not like on. Happy Gilmore. Your caddy isn't just chopping it up with you at like eighty. <laughs> if you need someone to <laughs> lean on, you got someone there. Is <laughs> well, you what I'm saying. Your you're not. Coach you're not just there you're alone. Your hitting coach. You can't lean on him. Lean on me. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. Listen. 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 You're telling me, all right, they have to, it's all individual. This is all individual. They have to be the best. You know how consistent you have to be for golf. Uh, you cannot mess up a single putt. You can't mess up a single chip. If you drive a ball in the woods, you know how far behind you are? And us average golfers, it's in the woods 89% of the time. So imagine it on a higher level. Okay, but you also got to keep <laughs> On these mind. courses that are also the, extremely difficult. The, the crazy amount of situations in baseball that you're, you got to worry about as, you know, a pitcher, outfielder, all the positions in baseball, you have to know, you know, all rules of the game. And you need to be able to process things like that. As soon as the ball is hit, you need to know God forbid where you get to a go. hangnail and you have to go on the 15-day <laughs> injury. <laughs> like, okay, Flip, what, what do you got over there? Okay, listen, imagine playing a game on a confined 200-foot rink, okay. sheet of ice. You have a blade on each foot. All right. Okay, then you, you have to, first of all, you have to learn how to, how to navigate with those two blades on your feet. Yeah. When you're like four or five years old. Okay, then you got to learn, there, there's this wooden or, uh, or fiberglass, I guess they use now, rods that you have to <laughs> stick in your hand. Rods. Okay, then you got to learn how to stick handle this vulcanized rubber puck and then you got to learn how to shoot it at speeds high enough 
to beat someone wearing a crap ton of heavy padding inside of a two by four goal goal. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much I, that goes into it. A golf, you, you just step up there with so a metal funny. thing and, and swing it. I, uh, yeah. Okay. You, I swear. I know I mean, it's more. I know it's more than I, that because I, I have played golf before. Dude. Okay. Or you get a, like I said, you get a hangnail. That's my. Yeah, okay. Like, I could agree with you on one thing. Hitting a baseball is the hardest thing to do in sports. It's just I not the agree. hardest sport. It's, it's just sport, not the hardest though. sport. That's the thing. Benny, do you know how many like there's there's weak ground balls? Yeah. Well, there's also there's also bad golfers. Straight up, there's bad golfers. Yeah, You've well, been we on might the have three on the desk right here. Saying, I don't know. Yeah, that that saying, there, there's two right here. I, I'm I'm probably one of the worst golfers of all time. I go out there on the course. You'll show me up. Is golf really that hard at that point? Yeah, because I'm not even in the top percentile. <laughs> no, but yeah, I'm telling you, Seth, that I go up there to tee up. It's going straight into the woods now. You're at least, you know, you're getting it on the green here. You're you're getting in play here somewhere. Are you? But that but that one shot you mess up. Can Devastating shot. You okay? Listen, you're 120 yards out. You're at your tee box here. You're sh shooting to an island, an island of green. That if you roll off and in the water, that's plus two. You're right. You're right there. I'll, I'll give I'll give you credit there. But I'm just I'm just saying. You know the competition. I think between I, even on a competition level, I I don't think it's there in, in golf. I think baseball. How is it there in baseball? I think it's. <laughs> it's telling me, you're telling me. I just think it it might just come down to the fact of a team sport. Uh, maybe the individual kind of takes away the competition. I don't think. I that think I think in my opinion, and I know baseball lovers are going to really be mad at me about this. I think hockey is more of a team sport than baseball is. Because you got, I can agree with that. Yeah, you got a that. lot of strategy. You got, you got forecheck. You got backcheck. You got all these different terms uh, and strategies that you have to use during a game. With ten people going on the ice at full speed, you're, you're not. Nothing's gonna happen. Like, I don't even know what to say. Which, what's gonna happen? What's well, gonna happen if one person messes up? You're right. That's, I think that's my. You point. guys, you guys gave me my flowers with you know the hardest thing to do in a sport. I'm gonna give you your flowers, and I, I think. A Thank goalie. You. Where's my no, flowers? Whether you get, get flowers when you win, when it. you win the golf <laughs> match and you <laughs> you're on the 18th yeah, hole. Where's my flowers? I think a goalie, whether it be in soccer or hockey, is the hardest position. Yeah, I, I agree. agree with that. I agree. So you're gonna give me. My I feel flowers. like you had something I, to say there, buddy. I have, you nothing, I have nothing to to refer to on on that end. I, I I'm, I'm gonna put golf. The con th it, out of the three, the concentration. Three? I, I would say it, it, you can argue that golf has more concentration. I would say than baseball. golf is the hardest to have the most consistency in because yes. you have to have consistency. you have to have the consistent swing, the consistent drive, the consistent for chip, the consistent putt holes. for eighteen holes, and then you got to do it all over again the next day if you're playing in a tournament. Yeah, yeah. Just general question though: Is it harder? Would you say to go on a slum? Like, let's say you're on a slum this, in I baseball. About this. Yes. Would would you compare it to golf? Is it the same mental game? But you, yeah. But you don't get into slumps as often as you like. If you just are not good at golf, you're it's just not. You're not good. <laughs> you're at golf. Not good that that is the That's one thing. That's my point. I'm not good at but golf. Like if you're in a slump, you're still you're still in the lead. Yeah. Like you're still hitting. You're gonna be in AAA yeah. if you're in a slump. Mm -hmm. Come back. And yeah. I think that's that's the one thing I kind of give a knock to hockey about is because there are so many opportunities to succeed yeah. during a game. You know, you have each shift which only lasts about 40, 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if you don't succeed during the one 40, 45 second clip, you can come back out and, and do it again in the next clip and, and it'll be like nothing happened. Yeah, and with hockey, there's so many shifts. So like yeah, you said, yeah. the amount of opportunities, yeah. no guys. But I feel like you know, that also makes it a little bit harder too because you're playing so yeah. much during the game. You're playing so much at full speed, there's, especially if you're a guy like Sidney Crosby who's playing at 38 years old yeah. and playing at the level that he's that playing at. That's impressive. As a, as a Pittsburgh, avid Pittsburgh Penguins watcher, that's why I have hockey as the hardest sport because I've seen what the Penguins have done to other teams over the last eight or nine years. Yeah. Well, guys, I say we had a, a very good debate. You know, this was great. This was great, great. discussion. I guys. didn't get flowers today, but you know what? None. I won't get them to my funeral. <laughs> That's all we have for this week's episode of Plead Your Case for Anthony DeFilippo, Benicio DeFalco, our producer Logan Arblaster, and everyone in the back. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. This has been a production of Waynesburg Community Television.